Hello and welcome to another Blender Sculpting video. In this one, we will be focusing on creating a little swamp stylized base ready for 3D printing, just like the one you see spinning here. If that's something that interests you, stick around for a full walkthrough of the process. Here's our starting viewport. I've already set up a base using a cylinder and just tapered it in at the top. I think we'll be recreating that later on. I've already started creating some wooden planks just using a square and then elongating it and uh, I've created some little screws which we're going to recreate anyway and some bubbles for the swamp. So everything's done in quite a graphic style and that's just to um, make sure that when it's prepared for 3d printing that uh, all the details come out clearly so i'm remeshing the the screw that we had and that's so that um the voxels will be quite big so we can edit it easily and i've just smoothed it out to get rid of the detail and i'm just using draw sharp to mark out the uh, the shape of the top of the screw there and i've just increased the voxel size to add a bit more resolution And then using draw sharp again to cut in around the base and then using scrape. It's a custom scrape brush that I'm using. And uh, if you'd like to know the setup of that, then I've got a video about hard surface sculpting, which gives you more information on setting it up like that. So I just add in a bit more detail to the screw you want really see any of this so I'm not spending too long on it because it'll be embedded into the wooden planks. So I'm now using the inflate brush to tighten up the screw head and then I'm just using draw sharp and holding control and you can sharpen up edges so it does the opposite of cutting in what it would normally do. So I'm just applying the scale of that object. So then it just it just means that when you're sculpting or remeshing, you get a more predictable result if you've applied the scale. Just using the reverse of draw sharp to sharpen up the detail there and then pinch to improve it further and just inflating it a little bit more, improve the form, make it look a bit more rounded. Now we're back into object mode and I'm just getting the scale as though I would like it. So I'm just adjusting the base now to be 30 millimeters in diameter. And I'm doing that in the item menu on the right under the transform menu. You can click and drag from the X box to the Y one and edit both of them at the same time. So I'm just going into edit mode for the base and you can see it's a basic cylinder and then I've selected the top and bottom face of the cylinder and then creased the edges. So if you look at the top right where it says mean crease, if you increase that it'll sharpen the edges so that when you add a subsurface modifier it will look sharp at those points. And then I've inset a face on the top which improves that edge. I'm just scaling that to get the taper right on the base. In object mode, you can use the measure tool and you can check out the exact size of things, which is quite handy. I've got my scene set up to use millimeters. It just means when you're exporting the object, you can be sure of the size that it'll be when it's printed. I should say it's not essential that you do this because you can scale the object in the slicer. So, um, But I find that it just gives you a little bit more accuracy on what what the sizes are going to be oh yes and for the for the measuring there i was in orthographic view which means that you get a more accurate measurement because you don't have the distortion and i've just selected all the other screws there and then selecting the new screw and then we're able to link all of the object data to this new one then all of the objects will stay in the same position but they'll just be the mesh will be replaced by this new one and now i'm just creating a basic cylinder and this will be the start of the tree trunk just moving these swamp bubbles out the way thinking about how the the overall positioning is going to be of the main shapes 
So I'm now going into sculpt mode for the tree trunk and I've just remeshed it to 0.2 millimeters voxel size and which is quite large but it's just because we're just laying down the base shapes for this uh, the tree trunk. So I'm just pulling out some of the roots using um, snake hook. And with snake hook it allows you to bend the mesh at the same time as pulling out. So it's quite useful for something like this. Now I'm using clay strips and I'm just painting over the top edge of the uh, tree trunk using quite a high strength and then holding control and doing the reverse of that on the inside. And then we can cut in. I have a little viewport in the bottom right and that's much smaller than the uh, the main one obviously and that's just to just to give me an insight into how the overall picture looks from a distance because this will be I mean the base is like 30 millimeters in size so it'd be quite a small object once it's printed so you want to make sure that the main the main shapes read quite well from a distance so I'm using the mask brush now just to mask out that top edge and I'm able to use the uh, move tool while in sculpt mode and bring it up on the Z axis to increase the, the edge size. And then I'm using a smaller uh, clay strips brush just to define the, um, the detail in the, in the uh, tree roots. And then now I'm using draw sharp to just sketch in some more of that detail. I'm looking at a reference for a tree trunk here, just to give me an idea of the flow of these uh, these details. It's, it doesn't need to be too precise, I think, because um, it's quite a stylized object I'm doing here. But I think if you if you get the general shape of these details, then it will start to look like a tree trunk. So I'm using the mask brush again, just to mark out a part of that lip. And then we can vary this top bit because you, it won't be often that you see, if it's in a swamp and this tree has been cut down uh, a good while ago, then it won't be in the best condition. So I'm just varying the, uh, the height of this, showing a bit of damage. Once it's masked out, just reversing the mask and then using the move tool to bring that down. And then we remesh again and that cleans up some of those uh, sharp edges from the moving. So the geometry gets a little bit messed up. And then things are still looking quite blocky if you look on the uh, main viewport, but if you look on the little one, it's starting to look a little bit more like a tree trunk from a distance. So I think it's if you keep an eye on that, it's important to know that a lot of your smaller details will uh, get lost once they're 3D printed. You can spend your time more wisely.
So I'm making a duplicate of one of the bubbles and then I'm using a boolean to remove the top one from the bottom. And this will create the effect of one of the bubbles popping. Just trying to lay these out so they look uh, appealing. We don't need too many because uh, trying to go for quite a stylistic look. So initially when I did these wooden planks, um, it's just one I duplicated and then I just rotated them slightly and moved them. And uh, then I sort of cut away one of them so that it's, you know, there's only half left. And I'm just going over with clay strips to just define the detail a bit more of the wood grain and then um, draw sharp in the gaps. So you'll notice the one in the background changing. I've got a link duplicate of one of the wooden pieces. Just masking out part of it and using the grab tool. Um, and that's just so that we can have some parts of the wood just sticking out, adding a bit of variation. So I'm just using clay strips and holding control to cut into the, the wood there and just add some damage. Just trying out the that half plank in a different position, and um, you can hit the R key twice to do a more of a free rotate, which is quite handy. I'm using the mask brush to just mask out the back of the um, the back of the plank and then feathering it, and then using the move tool in sculpt mode just to bring the back so that it meets uh, the floor, so it meets the floor and the um, tree trunk. And that's so that when we're 3D printing, there isn't any gaps in the middle, so it'll print much nicer. Just making a duplicate of the base, and then we can use the bool again to just cut away the base from this new one, and then we'll just have a thin circle. And we can use this for the, the swamp floor. So we can remesh this now. 0 0.2 again. Just scaling it up so it meets the edges while in sculpt mode. And then we can start to draw in using draw sharp and holding control. We can just draw in some ripples. So where the 
where the bubbles popped, for example, you'd have some ripples coming away. It just creates the effect of a bit more movement, something going on. Then uh, using clay strips just to go over those ripples, just back and forth, and it just looks, merges a little better with the, the floor. So what we'll do towards the end is merge all of these objects together. And so then it'll be, uh, it'll be able to 3D print it. I think it will be printed with, with the base as well. So you'll notice to the right of the viewport, I've got a jagged box shape and I use that to cut away the full size planks to make the, the half ones. So just using Boolean again. So as I've added a bit of detail to the half plank, what I'm doing here is making a duplicate and merging two of them together to make a full plank. And then what we'll be able to do is replace the objects that are already there for full planks with this, uh, this new more detailed one. So I'm using Control J to join the two pieces together and then if you just remesh them together then you'll have one solid object and we can just go in with clay strips again and then just tidy up the seam. Just filling out the bottom there, we won't see that, so it's just to make sure that it gets bedded into the base a lot better for the print. Just add in some more screws, and it's helpful to parent the, uh, the screws to the plank, and that means when you move the plank, you'll move the screws as well. So now I've selected all the other planks and linked object data. And just trying out some new positions and see what looks nice. So a better duplicate of the screw, I'm just creating a mushroom now. So I've done quite a high remesh, or should I say low detail remesh. Just smoothed it out and then I'm creating that mushroom shape. masking out uh, the bottom so that I'm able to scale the top, and get the proportions a bit better.
using clay strips the reverse of it to create the uh, the texture underneath it won't really be seen but and then using draw sharp around the edge of the mushroom to sharpen it up And then just going into edit mode and repositioning the mesh so that the origin is in a good position for putting it in place. So when you use the G key to move an object, you can hold control and snap, snap to the object's origin into position. So I'm just creating a cluster of these now by uh, linked duplicating each one. Just adding a bit more detail to the swampy water now using clay strips. So just adding a few more mushrooms to the top of the tree stump. So I'm just cutting in at the edge of that uh, wooden plank there and that's to create a bit of separation between each of the objects. So when it prints, the objects should be defined a bit clearer. Just pulling out some more details on the tree trunk. So now remeshing it to 0.1 millimeter, so we can add in a bit more detail. Just using clay strips and draw sharp still, and uh, I can just use a smaller brush size now.
And now we've got a bit of a better idea of what the, the overall composition is going to be. We can solidify some of these shapes a bit more. So just tidying up some of these ripples now, using jaw sharp and holding control to point out. Just remeshing the swamp water to 0.1 millimeter, which I think is the final resolution for all these objects. And you will notice it does look, it still does look quite blocky when you zoom in, but you'll find on a standard, you know, 2K mono printer, you're really not going to see uh, the difference, you know, whether it's any higher resolution than that or not, at least in my experience. So there is one object that's missing and I believe it's a skull. So who knows what kind of adventurers have been wandering into this swamp. So we want to create the impression that somebody has lost their life here. So I'm just creating a quick skull using clay strips, focusing on the main areas of a stylized skull. So we've got the cheekbones and the eye sockets and the nose. using the grab brush to just squish the head a little bit.
we bring if we narrow the eyes towards the nose then you can make the skull look a little bit more mean Don't need to worry too much about the back as it's going to be embedded into the swamp. It's starting to take shape now. And now we can just get it into position and scale it and see how it will look. So I'm just checking out that small viewport and just scaling the different items just to get the right portions to fill out this base nicely. Just have a good looking overall composition. Not sure what kind of character would be uh, best suited for this base. I kind of just made it uh, with the intent to just make the base really. So perhaps I can use it in the future.
All that's left to do now with our little swamp base is to merge all of the objects together and prepare it for 3D print. For more information on the full process of this, check out part 9 of the Sculpting a Miniature series. All the links are in the description. So that just about wraps up another sculpting adventure. The Swamp Base is ready to accept a willing hero. To download the finished model, check out my Gumroad. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to support more content like this for the future, check out my Patreon, just like these guys did. Thanks again to all my supporters, and I will see you all in the next one.